All right, welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about Euler's method, which is a technique we're going to use to approximate solutions to a differential equation. All right, so suppose we've got a differential equation, and we've got a slope field for the differential equation. We've already looked at how to kind of sketch a solution curve, and so I'm just going to sketch in the graph of f, which is the solution to the differential equation that goes to the point zero, 1. So I'm going to start with that point and then just kind of follow the lay of the land. And remember, it doesn't have to be a masterpiece or anything. It just has to extend to the edges of the slope field and not have any flagrant contradictions to the slope field tick marks, right? None of these, none of these things, you know, this is right here, not the best thing I've ever seen, but it's not flagrantly contradicting the slope field, okay? So that's the graph of F. We can also, you know, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of F at X equals zero by finding a point and a slope at that point. And that's going to be equal to 2 because the cosine of 0 is 1. Okay, now that I have that, I can write down my equation. And I just sketched that tangent line in there for you because I'm going to need that in a second. But I can use that equation to approximate the value of f at x equals 1. So I plugged in x equals 1 into that equation and solved for y, and I got 3. So what that's saying is that at x equals 1, the tangent line predicts that the value of the function is up here at 3. But we know that in reality, the actual value of the function is probably somewhere about here. And that's, that's a pretty big error, right? It's not a very good approximation. And we can see on the slope field why it's not a very good approximation, right? dy dx is subject to a lot of change on the interval 0 to 1. At x equals positive slope, and it's pretty steep. But by x equals 1, it's really leveling off and going close to being horizontal. Okay, so that's why our tangent line approximation is not very good. What we could do is we could stop halfway at our tangent line approximation, like, I don't know, say right here. Check back in with the slope field. I, I can even see a tick mark right here. It's telling me to go this way. And if I went that way after checking in, I have a much better approximation. And this thing that I'm describing here in gray, that's Euler's method. So let's actually do Euler's method with this differential equation in this scenario. Okay, so we're going to probably need to use the fact that cosine of 0 0.5 is approximately 0.88. But what we're going to do is we're going to write down repeated tangent lines. Okay, so if we're going to use, if we have information at x equals 0, and we're interested in approximating the value of the function at x equals 1, and we're going to take two steps of equal size. Well, the first step will be going from 0 to 0 0.5, and the second step will be going from 0 0.5 to 1. And that'll make more sense here in a second. Okay, so I'm going to write down my equation of my first tangent line. If it's two steps of equal size, it's going to be two tangent lines. So I already did that. That's y minus 1 equals 2 times x minus 0. Okay. Then I'm going to say, all right, my first step takes me from x equals 0 to x equals 0 0.5. So my new point, this is what I'm doing. I'm just plugging in to get a new point. So x equals 0 0.5, and y is going to be approximately equal to 1 plus 2 times 0 0.5 minus 0. Okay which is equal to 1 plus 1 is going to be 2. Okay, And then, okay, I can say I've got a new point, x equals 0.5, y equals 2, and I'm going to write down a second tangent line. Okay, My point is x equals 0 0.5 and y equals 2. My slope will be, okay, dy dx was equal to 3 minus y, times the cosine of x. Okay, 3 minus 2 is 1, cosine of a half is about 0.88, so we're going to say that's 0 0.88. Okay. And then we can write our equation. That'll be y minus 2 equals 0 0.88 times x minus a half. And then I'm going to take my second step and plug in x equals 1 and get my approximation. Okay, so I'm going to say over here, x equals 1, and y is going to be approximately equal to 2 plus 0.88 times 1 minus 0 0.5. Okay, so it's going to be half of 0.88 is 0.44, and I'll say my approximate value is 2.44, which we'll go back and we'll see that's probably a lot closer to the true value. 
Now, before I go back there, if we're taking two steps of equal size, one kind of like quick check to make sure we're doing it right is when we plug in to get our approximations both times, this delta x needs to be equal. So I need to be multiplying the slope by the same number each time if I'm taking steps of equal size. So notice there, both times I'm multiplying the slope by a half. So that's that's a good sign, right? If you're multiplying by two different numbers, it must mean that you've, you've done something wrong along the way. And something else I don't want you to forget about is using separation of variables. But hold on. I said I was going to go back to the picture. And, and so see how, you know, 2.44, that does look a lot like, you know, what I'm getting from Euler's method in gray. It's just, it's up there between two and three. It looks like a little below two and a half. So I feel like that's, that's, that's what's going on. Okay. And this is, you can see, it's a much better approximator for the true value than the tangent line approximation. But now I'm going to just real quick remind you about how separation variables works, right? Remember, we have to disconnect x and y with multiplication or division. So I'm going to divide by three minus y multiply both sides by dx, so that's cosine x dx, and then I anti-differentiate both sides, okay, an, an antiderivative for three, 1 over 3 minus y with respect to y would be log the absolute value of 3 minus y, and then I would check my antiderivative by taking the derivative, and I have 1 over 3 minus y times negative 1 for the chain rule, but I don't have negative 1 over 3 minus y, so I need to make that a negative. And that's going to be equal to an antiderivative for cosine x with respect to x is sine x. I'm going to need a plus c, so I'm going to put it on the side with the x's because I know eventually I'm trying to solve it. Why? Okay, I'm going to start by getting rid of this negative and putting it there. I'm going to take e to both sides power. Remember that c can move around the front. Okay, and then I'm going to just start solving it. Why? I'm going to drop the absolute value. Okay. And then I'm going to subtract 3 and then divide by negative 1 to get positive y. And so that will be y equals positive 3 plus or minus, really minus or plus, but it's the same thing, c e to the negative sine x. Okay. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to actually find the value of c using my initial condition, which was f of 0 equals 1. So when x equals 0, y equals 1. So 1 is equal to 3 minus some number, e to the sine, negative sine of 0, sine of 0 is 0. And so that's just basically 3 minus c. So c is going to equal 2. And I am definitely using the minus and the plus minus, right? And so in conclusion, I've got y, which is f of x, equaling 3 minus 2e to the negative sine x. All right, so don't forget about separation of variables. Okay, here's another Euler's method example. And this one comes from the old AP Calculus course description. And it's just a multiple choice question, but it's a, it's a good one. It's very representative of what you would expect to see on the AP exam. Okay, on the AP exam... I feel like I have seen one with three steps, Euler's method and three steps. Never seen more than three steps. Okay, in general, it's probably going to be two steps. Okay, it's just going to be like, do you know how to do Euler's method at all? And if you do, well, then you'll know how to do it in two steps, and you know they're not going to catch anybody with third step, right? Um, if you don't know how to do it, you don't know how to do it. So what we're going to do is we're saying g of negative one equals negative two, and Euler's method with a step size of 1.5 is used to approximate g of 2. So I'm going from negative 1 to positive 2. And I'm jumping 1.5 each time. Well, that'll be going from negative 1 to positive 0 0.5. And then from 0 0.5 to 2. Okay, so that's, that's my two steps. So a lot of this information in this table is going to be irrelevant. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down our first tangent. Okay. So that will be, my point will be negative 1, negative 2. My slope will be right here, it'll be positive 2. So my equation is y minus negative 2 is equal to slope times x minus negative 1. Okay. And then I'm going to plug in x equals 0 0.5 right here. And for x, I'm going to say, all right, when x equals 0 0.5, I don't want to run out of 
room, y is going to equal negative 2 plus 2 times positive 0.5 plus 1. Yeah, yeah, because the step size is 1 and a half. Okay, so I've plugged it in there, and I am saying, all right, what's going on here? 2 times 1 and a half is 3. Negative 2 plus 3 equals positive 1. Okay, so my second tangent line is going to be y minus 1 equals, okay, well, what's the slope where x equals 0 0.5? That's the slope of 1. So that's 1 times x minus 0 0.5. And then I'm going to plug in x equals 2 for my second step. Okay. x equals 2. And y is going to equal positive 1, when I add that over the other side, plus 1 times 2 minus 0 0.5. Okay, we're going to plug it in right there for x. And I'm saying, all right, 2 minus 1 half is 1 and a half again. So 1 plus 1 and a half is 2.5. And that's answer choice D right there. Okay. Now the last example I've got for you is from the 2016 BC exam. And this is a full-blown free response question with all sorts of things about differential equations. But the first part is find the second derivative in terms of x and y only. Okay, so we're going to do that implicitly. We know how to do this. We're going to say that we're going to take the derivative of dy dx with respect to x. And that's going to be the derivative of x squared is 2x minus one half and the derivative of y is dy dx okay, and since they want it in terms of x and y only we're going to call that x squared minus one half y and we might need to use that um, in the next part yeah so the next part says let f be the solution that passes through the point negative two eight does f have a maximum or minimum or neither at x equals negative two okay well we're going to first check dy dx at the point x equals negative 2 and y equals 8, because if it's not 0, I'll know it's a neither. Okay. So dy dx is going to be x squared, so negative 2 squared minus half of 8. It's like, okay, 4 minus 4. Okay, that is 0. Okay. And then I'm going to say the second derivative of y with respect to x both times at negative 2 and 8 is going to equal 2x, so that's negative 4, minus half of, well, the thing in the box, that's dy dx, and I just calculated that that's zero, okay, and that's less than zero, so I conclude that since dy dx is zero and the second derivative is negative, there's a relative maximum. Part C looks like it's going to be a L'Hopital rule question, and so I know I'm going to, I see a limit, I'm going to try to just plug in so I'm going to go to, okay, this limit is going to go to g of negative 1, you know, provided that g is continuous, which it is because I know it's got a derivative. Okay, g of negative 1, I'm pretty sure they told me it was 8. I've already, oh, goodness, I'm seeing now that g is a different solution with g of negative 1 equals 2. So, yeah, that's approaching 2 minus 2 divided by 3 times 0 to the second power. That's 0 over 0, so I know I need to use L'Hopital's rule. So this limit is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1 of the derivative. So that would be g prime of x divided by 6 times x plus 1. Okay. Since I've got g prime of x, x I'm going to say, all right, well, that's going to... Okay, what is g prime of x at negative 1? Well, that's going to be x squared is positive 1 minus half of y, which is 2. That's going to 0 again, divided by 6 times 0, 0 over 0. I'm going to use L'Hopital rule again. And then I'm going to get the limit as x approaches negative 1 of g double prime of x divided by 6. Okay. And that's going to go to, all right, g double prime. I need to pull back in the second derivative. So I squeeze it in there real small. And that's 2x, which is going to be 2 times negative 1, minus half of 0, right, again, because I know dy dx is going to be 0 because I just computed it up above. 
Okay, yeah, g prime of x is equal to zero at negative one. Okay, divided by six, and that's going to be a safe place to stop. If you want to call that negative two and a half divided by six, or, you know, yeah, there's, you could write it as a rational number, you could do that, but you don't need to, right, especially for your response. All right, and then the last part of this problem is the actual Euler's method part, and so we're going to use two steps of equal size from x equals zero to approximate the value of function h at x equals one. All right, we can do this. So we're going to start at x equals zero. We're going to go over to x equals one. We're going to take two steps of equal size. So my first step is going to go from zero to a half, and the second step will go from a half to one. Okay, my first tangent line is going to be, all right, I've got a point zero two. My slope is going to be zero squared minus half of y is going to be negative one. So I've got zero two dy dx equals negative 1. So my equation is y minus 2 equals negative 1 times x minus 0. I'll plug in a half. And then y will be approximately equal to 2 minus 1 times 0 0.5. Okay. So 2 minus a half is 1.5. Okay. So I've got a new point for my second tangent line. That will be where x is equal to 0 0.5 and y is equal to 1.5. Okay, and then dy dx, I'm going to have to compute that. That's going to be x squared is a fourth minus half of y is three fourths, so that's negative a half. And my second tangent line equation is going to be y minus 1.5 equals negative 0 0.5 times x minus 0 0.5 and then okay I'm going to plug in x equals 1 and y will be approximately equal to 1.5 minus half of 1 minus a half is going to be a half and because this is a free response problem this is a safe place to stop right in multiple choice we would definitely need to say that's one and a half minus a quarter is 1.25 which is the same as 5 four. so we got to be able to recognize all those answer choices but this will be good enough for us right here and I think that's a good enough selection of examples of Euler's method at this point you just need to practice it on your own so thanks for watching